Hello, welcome to the topic series. My name is Roy Paulson, president of Paulson Manufacturing. Today, I'm going to take Hugh Hoagland from arcware.com on a tour of the factory here at Paulson Manufacturing. Hugh, it's so good to see you. It's been years. Yeah, it's good to be and, here again. And I'm glad to you know, show you through the factory and, and see all the things that we've done that have changed and how we've modernized the facility and how we're building the state-of-the-art Arc Flash products. Well, it's exciting to look at the new stuff you guys have been making. Yeah, you've, uh, you've seen it from that one side, but now you're going to see how it's actually made. Actually, here on the table, you can see at one of the final assembly steps, she's building uh, our new HT product, which is highly transparent, 40 calorie arc shield. She's uh, attaching the self adhesive Velcro at this point, and they'll be uh, putting rivets in for permanent assembly after the, in the next step. These new HT products, which are uh, designed to allow full color recognition through them, uh, are all nanoparticle design. Polycarbonate is the base material. And not only did we improve it for uh, the color, but also we've improved it. The coatings are much better than they used to be for anti-fog and abrasion resistance. And we started talking about this nanoparticle stuff about 10 years ago, and you had to do a lot of work to figure out how to make that work. I have done a lot of work on it, <laughs> but I will say that the end result, I'm very satisfied, That's and uh, the testing results, I know when I see the testing results, they're off the charts. Off the charts, it's amazing. And uh, I'm, I'm very so satisfied. So you're putting rivets in now to make sure that the Velcro doesn't come off. Yes, it's, it's not so much of a problem in uh, the more temperate parts of the climate, right. but if you go to places like uh, Texas, and the guy has his gear stored in the trunk, it can be pretty hot. Yep. And so we want to just make sure. It's a little bit like a belt and suspenders. Yeah, there you go. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and take you on a tour through the plant. And then uh, feel free to ask any questions about uh, our equipment or our manufacturing methods. Super. All right, let's go. Well, Hugh, I'd like to show you our clean room facility here at Pulsa Manufacturing. Some of our jobs are such that we have to run them in an absolutely dust-free atmosphere. Sure. So we have a class 1000 clean room, which has not only uh, a clean atmosphere, but also very close temperature control. Right. Because there's a relationship between dust and humidity and dust and temperature. And so in this, we can run our most critical products and uh, we can also package them in entirely inside the clean room and pass them out through a pressurized wall so we have pre-packaged inside the clean room product, totally dust free. Uh -huh. Only necessary for certain products, but uh, if you need it, there's nothing quite like having a completely sealed clean room for molding. That's amazing. Hugh, after we make our parts out in the factory, mold them or fabricate them, then we have to bring them into these assembly departments, and in, in these assembly departments, they put all of the parts together. Every day we'll be doing a different type of a project, but all of them are for parts that we make. And as I've told you before, we make everything ourselves. Right. Right down to the rivets and washers. Yeah. So these departments will bring in the products, they'll build them against the orders, and then we'll take them out to the shipping department and, and ship them out against orders every day. Interesting, that's great. Now you guys make stuff for all kinds of different companies, right? Yes, we do. Kind of, you can't talk about that. I can't talk about all the different manufacturers <laughs> sure. we work with, but OEM, or Original Equipment for Other Manufacturers, right. is 50% of my total sales. Oh, wow. That's so great. it is a large portion for us. That's super. Super. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you some of our CNC machining. Oh, nice. Let's go. So, Hugh, a lot of our parts, after we've molded them, we have to do further fabrication. We call it a second op. But in our case here, we're almost always using CNC technology. It might be three axis, four axis, or even five axis CNC. But by doing this, we're able to take our molded parts and change them to fit and also to hold the accuracy dimensionally of exactly what it needs to fit. Oh, that's great. And it, and it make, gives us more flexibility and it raises the bar. We can make our products in a way that have a better fit, feel, and function than any of our competitors. And that's one of the interesting things is that's what helps your optics because you're molding instead of just making a plastic piece and folding it. 
Yes, we are able to do what we would call thermal forming, and we still do thermal forming of like policemen's body shields and things like that. Yeah. But all of these new products, they're all molded to shape, and they actually have a constantly changing wall section to adjust the optics to pass not only here in the United States, but also the class one requirements for Europe. Yeah, we're working on those standards. The ISO standard that's coming through right now on being able to, to be optically be able to see through everything well. Yes, it's really important for the guys for the high definitions required. Yeah. So now we're going to go over and look at the CNC machining of our new three-phase arc shield. Okay, great. Thanks. So Hugh, after we make the frames, which uh, are injection molded here, yes. then we take them and we, uh, this is for the three-phase, we put all this fine detail of these ventilation uh, slots in here and all of these different holes that you see, they all have to go in very precisely. So you can see here on this five axis CNC machine, we're able to do that work. All automated, the operator just installs and then removes a part. All the programming is done here. We built all the mandrels ourselves. And this type of an operation is what gives us that fit, feel, and function yeah. to make it so that the person who's wearing it has the most precise best possible product in the market. And this allows you both to breathe and also lets some of the sound through, I guess. That's correct. I mean, you would have both the advantage of that you've got air that can go through, right. which we were the first to make a vent, right. and we trademarked the name Those Arc Vent. <laughs> and so uh, the first time you can have ventilation plus auditory so that you can speak and hear through this better than before yet the arc flash doesn't come through. That's great. And, and we proved it when we ran the 40 calorie, oh, yeah. went all the way to 100 calories in the testing, and no problem with the ventilation. That was kind of a shock that these things went to 100 cals. It was amazing. So you've got like the auditory vents here so the person can hear better, and then these vocal vents so they can actually hear you talk, so the workers can communicate. It's so important, communication, to be able to hear and speak. So these vents, not only will they improve the airflow through the product, sure. but they give you the auditory, and they're also designed so that if you have a fan system, these vents work in concert with the fan system. Yeah. Now what everybody was so surprised about was that these arc vents are able to stop the arc flash from entering the energy into the unit. You didn't see any issues with no. that? No, I mean, we took this all the way up to 100 cows, and it wasn't affected at all. It's pretty amazing. Thanks, Hugh. Yeah, yeah. Well, Hugh, I wanted to show you that we're not only making the face shields that you've seen, but we're also making all of the parts and the pieces down to the washers and rivets. This gives us not only control of the, of the material and the parts, but also the interface of how everything fits together and we can check the quality of it. Well, it's really important that you get the, the final product actually works correctly because you're making it all in-house. You can change things if you need to. Huh? If we need to. And, and as you've seen, in the circumstances of uh, arc flash testing, the smallest little thing can go wrong yeah. and then you fail because of you've got an after flame or something yeah, like this. Yeah, you really this. hate it if a rivet ignited and you can't control that rivet. If you don't control the rivet, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And so, since we have that control of every material, and flame retardancy is one of our specialties, sure. we know how to keep those materials from burning in that testing. That's awesome. So here, here we are making our legacy green arc shields. Yeah. These are injection molded to shape, as that you see coming off of the mold. Again, as I had mentioned, for optics, this lens is, has all different thicknesses to keep those so that when you look through it, you're looking straight through the lens. Yeah. We have to meet those very stringent requirements, uh, especially in Europe, for optics. Right. So these are made about one every 45 seconds wow. off of the machine, and uh, we're molding it on the most modern equipment that we can. All of this tooling was built by us, polished by us. As you know, we do the original uh, engineering in-house also. Right. We like to do everything, as we call it, being vertically integrated. That's great. And by doing it this way, we have control. And, and uh, the materials and the material science is also something that we specialize in. And when we go to our lab, I'll explain how we develop that. That's amazing. So if you look here, Hugh, uh, I can show you that the injection molding process, the molding, molding machine closes 300 tons of clamping pressure. 
And the plastic is injected at about 15,000 PSI. Wow. That's a lot of horsepower pushing that in there. Yeah. Fills the mold. And the plastic at that point is more or less a consistency of toothpaste. Yeah. Except it's hot. <laughs> and it's all this waiting time, waiting for the next part. That's just the plastic coming down in temperature. Okay. Because it has to come down to a temperature that we can remove the mold, the molded article from. Now she'll remove the part, closes the door, and then you immediately will get your next part. That's and amazing. this cycle goes on 24 hours a day. That's crazy. We don't want to change any conditions on it because that consistency is what gives us a very high quality. Oh, that's great. So now, Hugh, we're right here at the spear point, the point where the part is actually made from a, a, a granulate, which we would call the resin, with all the additives in it, and then it's molded into the tool. It's an all stainless steel mold that the part forms in between a male and female cavity. This machine clamps this together at 300 tons of pressure. The plastic is injected, and that snapping sound you just heard that is the plastic moving through so quickly, it's breaking the speed of sound. Oh, wow. In the plastic. In the plastic. Yeah. Which, is, of course, the speed of sound in plastic is lower than it is in air. Sure. But it is a circumstance that this phenomena of this tremendous pressure pushing that into the, into the mold. That's awesome. And we get about one part every 45 seconds, about. And most of the time, it's just the cooling time for the plastic to come down to a temperature that you can handle it. Oh, wow. So she's now going to she'll remove it. The part is is cool enough that I can handle it by my by the edges. Yeah. But it's a little bit too hot to it's hold hot. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, otherwise, having worked in the factory all my life, I'm used to handling plastic parts. Yeah. So Hugh, here we're manufacturing the new three-phase arc shield. That's awesome. Molding it directly from the resin. Yeah. Uh, into the condition that you see it here. Yeah. Again, it's about one part every 45 seconds. And uh, as you'll feel it, this is part still hot, right out of the mold. Oh, yeah. And so what's key to this molding is that you have to have a perfectly polished optical mold. Right. Because the plastic replicates the surface of the mold. Sure. Now, in this case, these parts are nanoparticle. When we were showing the green parts earlier, the legacy green, the parts were an organic dye. Yeah. But these are nanoparticles that are dispersed inside the material, but yet they, and they're uh, highly transparent, but you can uh, know from your testing that the infrared energy is completely blocked by this shield. Right, it is. And then with this curve that you see across the front of this, this gives less interior reflection than when we had shields that were curved just in a single uh, curve like a cylinder. Yeah, I see the reflection on the outside, but when I hold it up, I see no reflection at all. It's designed to reduce the reflection, and of course, as you have it fully assembled with the, the cap bracket, that provides a little bit of shading on the top, sure. just like a baseball visor shades you, the, the cap bracket that goes on the final assembly. That's cool. This, this is the sprue, this is where the plastic is injected, and then this is the gate. All this will be cut off over in that CNC equipment that you saw us running. Okay. So in this, I believe that you are seeing now the absolute highest technology arc shield possible to manufacture. That's great. Nanoparticle, toric lens, anti-reflection, special coatings to the uh, both exterior and the interior, ventilated, uh, has the features and benefits that, the, that these end users are really looking for. That's amazing. So he'll keep an eye on here. You'll see that he's gonna be removing the part right now. And that part has just come now from being a liquid condition or a semi-solid condition down to a rigid condition where he's able to remove it from the machine. Every part is inspected individually here. Each part is inspected more than six times before we ship it. 100% inspection more than six times. And we inspect these parts also for their infrared transmittance to assure that we have the calorie rating. We're running 40 calorie at this time, but we run from the same tool, we'll run 12 calorie, 20 calorie, 40 calorie, 75 calorie, and 100 calorie. 
It has to do with the formulation that we're running. Hugh, we have multiple labs here at Paulson Manufacturing. We had developed our laboratory capacity working with the U.S. military. And I took these CRADAs, Cooperative Research and Development Agreements, with the military, and then later developed those into being paying contracts, mm. and did materials research, product re uh, design. Uh, having to do that work raised my, the bar, yeah. because I did it for over a decade of this type of work. So we applied that. Many products that we're manufacturing today are a direct result of that type of uh, research and development that we did for Uncle Sam. Here is an example of an impact testing machine. This particular impact testing machine not only can uh, do the ANSI Z87.1 high-speed impact, but it also, with a different size pellet, is certified to do the EN166 impact testing. Oh, okay. And this is a uh, plan on our side, is to get all of our equipment or additional equipment so that everything will work for both. And so uh, this is an example of that. So we have a three-phase arc shield inside here. This, as you may notice on the ANSI testing, you'll say, see where it says ANSI uh, Z87 plus. Correct. So the plus is the indicator that it passes this high-speed impact test. There's a quarter-inch steel ball loaded here into the breech. We have a pneumatic cannon. We have uh, uh, certified uh, pressure gauges here and then a chronometer to measure the speed. So we have a laser built into this mm -hmm. so that the laser shoots down through the barrel just for alignment purposes. Okay. Because in many cases it's hard to align it exactly where you're supposed to shoot the product. Okay. So the, the laser aligns it. We have a, a pressure, certified pressure gauge here. Uh, for the air pressure to shoot the pneumatic cannon, mm -hmm. and it shoots a quarter inch steel ball. It's a smaller size ball if we're shooting it for uh, international standards. And uh, then we have a chronometer that we re will record the speed of the impact. So this one can actually do the a a ANSI standard and the EN standard. That's correct. It meets, it, it meets the requirements for both by changing the size of the ball and changing the speed. Ah, okay. Because they use a smaller ball, you have to go with a higher speed ah, okay. on that. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you some of our spectroscopy equipment. Oh, thanks. So Hugh, here we have spectroscopy. Very important part of lens manufacturing. Of course. Whether I'm making a part for a ski goggle or I'm making a part for uh, an arc flash, I have to know the visible light transmittance, mm -hmm. I have to know what wavelengths of light are going through, I have to be able to measure on our shields for arc flash the infrared absorbance of the product. Oh, okay. So it, with this and with this equipment we're able to measure, we can get the, the VLT, we can see exactly which wavelengths are going through in the visible light, but in the infrared light which is obviously invisible to the human eye. Of course we have to be able to measure that also. And this equipment will do that, and we can measure it very, very accurately. So we can take a part that's a 12 calorie part or a 20 calorie part and easily show and see what the difference is. Right. So not only are we using this for uh, our uh, quality control of the products that we're building, but we're also using this for the research and development. Of course. And that's how we got to the nanoparticle designs, measuring, testing, and then the part that I don't know if I've told you, we have our own arc testing machine besides. Oh, I know. <laughs> and so with our arc testing, we don't test uh, uh, as uh, exactly the same as you do sure. in your facility, but we're able to test and measure our parts mostly used for development of the new products. I know you've been working on this for a long time, building the data on it over the years. Yes, we have a, a big database uh, showing uh, of, of our arc testing and understanding how the materials, every material reacts differently in sure. the arc. Sure. And we're able to uh, see this development on a very short time scale because on my equipment, I have uh, a very rapid response from the sensor to give me very accurate data of how the materials are reacting uh, one thousandth of a second at a time. And this way, with, his, uh, with this close monitoring of it, is how we develop the new nanoparticle shields. That's great. So Hugh, I want to go over and show you how we do our long-term testing for weathering. 
because that while that's not in the standard and a requirement, in the case of this long-term weathering testing, we're able to see how the products will perform over years. Oh, okay. So let's go take a look at that. That sounds great. So Hugh, as we're working with these different types of parts, we like to see how will this part react if it's outdoors for a long period of time. Oh, and that's what really happens. And then it's the reality of the circumstance. Yeah. So this is one of the pieces of equipment that we have to test that. Mm -hmm. Now this uh, xenon test chamber will simulate through an ASTM testing protocol long-term outdoor exposure. Mm -hmm. And then we have the additional uh, feature in this of that it has a rain cycle so it indicates or it uh, simulates rain on the part. So that's washing off the oxide on the outside, so it's even harsher. It's on even the part. even harsher because okay. the oxide would naturally protect the product. Of course. Now there's all types of materials that we could test in this machine, but for us, we're just testing the face shields, the brackets, and the assemblies that we have that go on it. Okay, great. Continuing our talk about environmental exposures, we also use the Tenney environmental chamber which can go to minus 100 Fahrenheit all the way to over 400 degrees Fahrenheit. With wow. this type of a range and adjustable humidity, we're able to simulate conditions in Fairbanks, Alaska, for example. Of course, so yeah. we're now able to know how will our arc shields perform in, a, in an environment such as Fairbanks, Alaska, or Phoenix, Arizona in the summer. And this, so this machine is used to test not just our arc shields, but we use it for testing our military face shields and our other industrial products. Oh, that's great. And you said you could actually program this to basically ramp up and down humidity and temperature? That's correct. Humidity and temperature. It'll change temperature about one degree per minute. Okay. And so it can be a fairly long cycle, but we'll run cycles uh, for a week or so at a time. And that way we can go through all these different ranges, ramping it up and down. And as you know, materials expand and sure. contract. And we can make sure that we're not getting expansion issues. We can see that the product, again, long term is what we're thinking of. And this, this type of equipment will show that to us. So if somebody puts it in their truck, you've already kind of know what's going to happen in the, the heat of Texas or in the cold of Alaska. That's correct. We have already done that testing. Oh, Ju awesome. It's just like uh, on this new three phase, we've gone testing for uh, 2,000 repetitions of opening and closing oh. to see, make sure that the latches work, the pivots work. Then we take all the parts apart and we have a digital uh, microscope photographing and the, looking for wear points and measuring at wear points, simulating what would be something be after that number of times of use. Did that make the carpal tunnel go up in here in the plant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the we, do we, that, we, and well, in that particular case, we, uh, we uh, spread the love around. <laughs> <laughs> so Hugh, this is our machine shop where we're building all of our molds. We're build, we build molds, tools, and dies for Paulson Manufacturing and for others too. Oh, okay. And uh, so since we have all the equipment, why not keep it running all the time? Exactly. So you can see molds and dies here it's disassembled on this uh, table. Uh, where we're in this case, we're doing a mold repair and change, right. and over here we're doing machining. All of this type of equipment is specialized for mold building. Right. So we start off with basic blocks of steel. Of course. We have the design from the engineering department of the part. Then the mold shop here will, will re reverse the design from the part to the injection mold, which is actually the opposite of the part. Sure. We pick out all of the different types of materials. We build what's called Class A tooling. So it's heat treated tool steel designed for long term conditions. And then of course the optical molds are generally made out of a, st a form of stainless steel for rust resistance and to keep that very high finish. Okay. It's different making optical tooling than it is making tooling for general products. Right. But we're doing both. Okay. If you look at our brackets, for example, that would be considered a general product. Sure. And then if you see the optical tooling with the lens, that has this super fine finish on it. And that's really super fine. When I look at it, it looks almost like a mirror. Yeah, well, the tool looks just like a mirror. Yeah. In fact, it has a better finish than a mirror. <laughs> we would call it a first surface mirror oh, in wow. scientific oh, sure, uh, terminology. Yeah. And so in that, we have to do a lot of calculation mathematically in advance so that we know when we build that lens that it'll be optically correct. Oh, that's, yeah. It's, and uh, in that, 
optics and in that field, we are considered to be one of the number one companies in the world for it, the sizes that we're building of face protection. That's amazing. Now I'm going to go show you our uh, machinery that we use for doing the 3D printing because we always make 3D models first. Yeah, Let's go take a look at that. Yeah. Hugh, as we're building and developing new products, after we get it through the initial design phase, we always do a 3D printing of the product. So here's an example of components that we're printing out here for our new articulated light mount that it will go on to the uh, three-phase arc shield to hold the flashlight. Oh, okay. So we build these samples up in this machine here, which is a 3D printer. I can make in this a, a product as large as a fireman's helmet in one shot. Wow. And it manufactures everything in polycarbonate, which is very convenient for us. Right. It prints these out just a couple of hours. And this is what's happening when you're sending up parts that are prototypes and they're all white. It's, they've been built in 3D printer and you're trying them out. That's right. I, I've done that as uh, both for impact, sure. for arc flash and so forth. Right. And then you'll see them uh, as a printed part. That's awesome. And we can build them quickly, we can change them quickly, sure. and we can uh, learn from the test results. Like if we send them up to you, and we have a problem, we're learning from it very quickly, right. and then we're making the changes that are necessary. Okay. So Hugh, I wanted to thank you for your time today. Taking you through the plant, you got to see everything. You got to see the products being molded, you got tested, you saw the products that were being assembled, and then final packaged in the room that we're actually in. Yeah. So with that, you have a greater understanding of what we're doing, and when you see those products coming up for testing, you know that we put a lot of work into building those right from the ground up. Well, we always want to help our customers, and the more I understand about what you're doing and what you can do, the more I can figure out ways to help you. Yes, and we appreciate that feedback, because that direct feedback is what comes to the best product possible in the market. Great. Thanks, Hugh, a, lot, thanks a lot, Thanks a lot. Good to see you. Nice to see you.